Office of the Coordinator of Inter-American Affairs presents Belo Horizonte, a planned city with a plan. Less than 50 years ago, Brazil's Coral del Rey Mountains looked down on a hamlet hidden among the rolling foothills. Today on this site stands Brazil's seventh city, Belo Horizonte, home of over 200,000 far-thinking people. Capital of the state of Minas Gerais, located in the south-central part of Brazil, Belo Horizonte is 287 miles from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil's largest city and world-renowned for its fabled beauty. Four hundred and sixty-three miles from São Paulo, Brazil's second city and the ranking industrial city of Latin America. Prior to the year 1897, the unique and interesting colonial city of Ouro Preto, now preserved as a national monument, served as capital for Minas Gerais. But enterprising mineros, or miners as citizens of this state are called, with characteristic foresight saw the need for a more centrally located city, one which would permit unlimited expansion. The foothills of the Coral del Rey Mountains were selected as the site. But before ground was broken, literally before one pickaxe disturbed the serenity of the lovely hills, engineers and architects translated into maps and blueprints the hopes and dreams of the founding fathers. A people's pride envisioned this model inland city. A people's spirit and strength built it. Justifiably proud is the Mineru of his public buildings and his leading officials. The governor's palace, residence of the state's chief executive, the Department of Interior, the Department of Agriculture, the Department of Education, the main post office, the city hall, executive offices of the mayor, capable, enthusiastic Dr. Juscelino Kubitschek. But Belo Horizonte is more than a seat of government. It is the commercial hub of a state fabulously rich in natural resources. A visit to the Feira de Amostras, a building erected to house a permanent exposition of the economic wealth of this great state, will help to explain the phenomenally rapid growth of its principal city. It has been said that the state of Minas Gerais has a chest of iron and a heart of gold. Here the history of gold is the history of colonial Brazil under Portugal, and more particularly of the development of the state of Minas Gerais. For 350 years, in this oldest, richest gold mining community of Moru Velho, within sight of Belo Horizonte, Brazil produced more gold than the rest of the Americas combined. Intensive and careless exploitation, plus a natural depletion in reserves, has reduced Brazil today to 12th place among world producers. Even this comparatively small output of gold reflects itself on the economic life of the city. The gold era is gone, but a new era is being ushered in. King Iron, long a slumbering giant in the mountains of Minas Gerais, is beginning to stir. One quarter of the total known iron reserves of the world are in Brazil. At Itabira occurs the largest single deposit. The hilly streets and roads in and around this mining town are literally made of iron. This peak is estimated to contain over 100 million tons of hematite. So high grade is the ore that the average will assay 68% of a theoretically possible 72% of pure iron. The railroad from Belo Horizonte is being extended to the peak, 
by cutting through mountain passes and by filling in deep gorges. Building roadbeds is no simple engineering problem in this rugged terrain, but the work goes on. The ore, much of which will be used to make these very rails, is loaded into heavy-duty trucks and hauled several miles to the railroad terminus. From this point, the ore train proceeds toward the railroad yards of Belo Horizonte. At this important junction, some of the cars may be sent to the foundries in Sao Paulo. Most of them will go on to a large steel, wire and rail mill at Monlevade. Employing over 2,000 people, this mill, the only railrolling mill in South America, is but the vanguard of even larger mills and foundries now in construction. Brazilian industry, responding to the tasks imposed by the war, is on the march. Well do the Mineiros know that in this great drama, on which the curtain is now only rising, their state and their capital city are destined to play important roles. On display in the exhibition building, a visitor will see two other minerals, quartz crystal and mica, both native to this state. The exigency of war has skyrocketed these minerals to an even higher place of prominence than they originally enjoyed in the peacetime markets of the world. Quartz crystal, of which this mounted specimen is an outstanding example, today is an indispensable strategic material. It's the special electrical property of this mineral which has made it possible for the armed forces of the United Nations to have such highly sensitive and accurate communicating and detecting devices. Indeed, without Brazilian quartz, many of these devices would not exist. While a great share of the mining operations is done by mechanized equipment, manual labor is imperative in order to prevent injury to the crystal. Enjoying equal fame with quartz as an essential sinew of war is mica. The property of heat and electrical resistance makes this mineral invaluable in the manufacture of airplane spark plugs, radio tubes, magnetos, and many a secret military device. Again, from the rich subsoil of Minas Gerais comes this vital material. In the cutting and trimming shops, busy mineros, men, women, and children keep these leaves of mica moving toward the stockpiles of American factories and arsenals, and thus are contributing their very ample share to the cause of freedom. Numerous and varied are the other minerals on display at the Feira, all of them contributing to the prosperity of Belo Horizonte. No wartime aristocrats, but worthy of more than a mention, are manganese, chromium, aluminum, silver, nickel, graphite, calcium, kaolin, columbite, and zirconium. Belo Horizonte is also the center of Brazil's steadily growing diamond industry. This diamond, named in honor of Brazil's President Vargas, is the fifth largest diamond in the world, weighing 726 carats. In the production of semi-precious stones, the state of Minas Gerais is the undisputed leader of the world. But if the subsoil of this state is rich in diversified minerals, nature has invested its soil with amazing fertility. The products grown are legion. Castor beans, tea, coconuts, peanuts, rice, wheat, beans, corn, tobacco, cotton, 
Also on display are some of the manufactured articles of this state. Cosmetics, dolls, bathroom fixtures, ironware, thread and yarn, textiles, pipe tobacco, soap, fertilizer, lubricating oils, building materials such as cement and various types of marble and granite. Yes, all this nature has generously and bountifully entrusted to the care of the people of this great state. And over all these riches, they are proving themselves trustworthy guardians. To accommodate their rapidly expanding industries, they are putting into execution a plan which was well prepared in advance. In this area, restricted to industry, all factories will have direct access to two railroads. Even as the building of the roadbeds, bridges and viaducts proceeds, large plants are springing up. Equally as progressive and forward-looking were the Mineros in designating and providing ample and spacious residential districts. Though Belo Horizonte is principally a city of private homes, the influx of large numbers of people has given impetus to the building of apartment houses and hotels. Throughout Brazil, primary school education is compulsory. Centrally located in each community are fine schools. Judged by any standard, the educational system of Belo Horizonte is efficient and advanced. At the conservatory, instruction in music is available to young and old alike. Unique in vocational education is the Instituto Juan Pinheiro, attended by young boys from all parts of the state where emphasis is put on the teaching of agriculture. The Veterinary and Biological Institute gives advanced courses in animal husbandry. The public library houses a fine collection of reference works available to the student in Portuguese, French or English. Great progress has been made in improving the lot of the underprivileged boy. Fashioned on the same pattern as Father Flanagan's Boys Town, this school, supported by the five city newspapers, trains these boys in the printer's trade. In dealing with crime, the Mineros have brought penology to a high point of accomplishment. The penitentiary of Nevis is one of the most modern prisons in the world. To return men to society as useful citizens is the ultimate aim of every prison. Here at the model prison of Nevis, by the application of the honor system, by making available to the inmates practical vocational instruction in diversified trades, and by providing them with well-lighted and ventilated quarters, the Mineros are making good in their efforts to rehabilitate these men and to make them potentially useful to their respective communities. Typical of the many modern hospitals and sanatoriums devoted to the care of the sick is the San Vincent de Paulo Hospital. In planning their city, the founding fathers allocated a large tract of land for a municipal park. Today, in this beautifully landscaped park, in the heart of the city, the Mineiro and his children avail themselves of the many facilities for diversion and play.
one of many other recreational centers is the Minas Tennis Club. Around attractive Lake Pampulia, a few minutes drive from the center of town, a new residential district is being built in the traditional way of the Mineiro, according to plan. Already in operation is the Yacht Club, with its magnificent swimming pool and clubhouse. Across the lake at the Pampulia Casino, Mineiros can dine, dance, or watch a smart floor show. If they prefer, they can go to the more popularly priced baile and dine and dance in the open pavilion. In all his enterprises, the Mineru humbly has sought divine guidance. And in his free houses of worship, he has offered up his thanks for the blessings it has been his privilege to enjoy. Proud indeed is the friendly Mineru of his achievements, as from day to day, his capital city continues to grow and prosper. To him each year on September 7th, as he commemorates his Independence Day, freedom and liberty have a special significance. For free men were his fathers who planned his beloved city. Highly resolved are his sons to remain free as they plan for their proper place in the assured future of orderly, progressive Brazil.